I got a little criticism the other day saying, don't you have anything positive today? You just you just hate everything. Uh, well, there's a lot to hate out there, uh, and it's good to hate uh, bad things. Uh, evil is something that you should hate, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and that's that's really all I have to say about that. But I, but I will say something positive about Doctor Who, and it's not about the uh, the current show because there's nothing positive about it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I checked out this uh, audio drama original, which came out in 2022. Uh, the Resurrection Plant, uh, and uh, Doctor Who does a lot of audio dramas. They're like an hour long, and they've got some good production. Uh, they've got cool sound effects and uh, a, a wonderful narrator in Fraser Hines, who uh, who really does honor to Doctor Who. Uh, this storyline, uh, The Resurrection Plant, uh, which I checked out on Amazon yesterday, uh, really just encompassed what Doctor Who should be. It's, it's pure science fiction. Uh, great monster story. Uh, it, it actually does uh, some some cool twists with the uh, the uh, continuity of Doctor Who and all of the uh, regeneration uh, stuff and and the Time Lords, uh, and it's really cool. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed this a lot. And uh, that's what I have to say positive about Doctor Who right now. <laughs> hey, and it's from 2022, so it's kind of it's kind of modern Doctor Who. It's just not the TV show, right? Uh, and that's what we have to deal with is the TV show. <laughs> Hey, uh, look at that transition. So we got the ratings in for this new episode, and uh, it's looking to be on the trajectory we exactly thought it was. I'm going to get into why last week had a blip and why this week is right back down to where it was in just a moment. My name is John Delarose. I'm a number one best-selling science fiction author myself, and if you like good science fiction, classic science fiction with a lot of action and adventure, like Doctor Who used to be, uh, check out Justified Saga of the Nano Templar. This is a trilogy. You know, it's kind of my answer to Disney Star Wars these days. I just I just uh, flip it on its head and uh, make some crusaders in space. It's freaking awesome. You're going to really enjoy it. I'll put that link in the description below for you to check out. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button too and join our community here. It means the world to me. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. The Doctor Who fandom is, is some of the best out there. Uh, and it's really sad that they've turned their backs on you and me. Because, uh, you know, we actually care. We're readers. We're, we're watchers. We're, we, we're people who actually uh, really, really get dedicated to our science fiction. And that's the type of fan base you want, not a modern audience who's not going to tune in. Radiotimes.com is looking <laughs> to have a modern audience. Look, at they've got the full rainbow uh, <laughs> for their just, just their logo. So cringy. Happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> Happy Pride for Doctor Who. Uh, and, uh, they, you know, they're in full cope and panic mode right now. I, I went over yesterday how Russell T Davies, uh, is already going out there just like, uh, smugly going at you, uh, white people, uh, really as, as, uh, as viewers and, uh, and just, uh, lambasting white people at every turn. Uh, and that's what got was doing too. Uh, that's, that's what the whole crew's doing. Uh, and they're proud of it. They're proud of lambasting white people there. This is an anti-white racist show at this juncture. Uh, and it was a show for British white people. I mean, that's, that's, that's where this originally came about. Uh, I mean, William Hartnell, uh, and his whole group, it, it was meant to be like an educational show, show, uh, for white British children. That's, that's really like the demographic that they, they went for. Well, now it's a groomer show <laughs> pushing creepy sexual fetishes of Russell T Davies and his, his, uh, his uh, cronies out there. And, uh, also pushing this like race baiting agenda that I, you know, I think is coming from Disney, more than anything, because Disney really loves stoking race wars. Uh, it seems to be their entire agenda at this point. And people are stopping watching, is what's coming down. We saw with the 60th anniversary specials, uh, as as it started, they replaced Rose, our good, uh, uh, our, our favorite uh, companion of the modern era, uh, as uh, with a transgender black dude uh, who's Donna Noble's son who's wearing a you know women's clothing. Uh, and, uh, and then everybody goes, oh, she's such a beautiful woman. Well, ratings for that were not so great. And the next 60th anniversary specials dropped even further than that. As soon as they introduced Gatwa, that was the lowest rated special ever. And then it came out with the Christmas one with the weird goblin singing, uh, and, and, and it was creepy and odd and didn't make any sense with Doctor Who. Uh, they tried to like Harry Potter. The goblins look like Dobby from, from Harry Potter. It's like, what are you doing? Uh, and of course, that was the lowest rated Christmas special ever. <laughs> and then uh, the premiere comes out and we have the lowest rated premiere since Hartnell started. Uh, and uh, that's crazy. Then the episodes dropped even further out, out that. So um, started at about a 2.4 million uh, overnight viewers level, uh, then went down to uh, 2.04 uh, uh, 
uh, on Boom, uh, and this is uh, this is it started with two point six, sorry, then to two point four, then to two point zero, uh, when Stephen Moffat came in with his uh, very boring episode. Uh, it popped up last week to two point six two. And uh, I, I was gloating about this because it was, the episode didn't feature the Doctor at all. The Doctor was missing, and it was Millie Gibson in a horror drama. Uh, uh, and with uh, with that, it actually was 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 tolerable and watchable. Now, Russell T. Davies was super lazy with the writing, and it didn't resolve well, and that probably turned fans off by the end of it. And I, I'm noticing a trend here. Like, if you look at the end of all of these episodes, Russell T. Davies, it's it's like he's slapping the fans in the face intentionally with all of them. Uh, you look at the Devil's Chord, it breaks out into like musical song and dance like it's an episode of Glee uh, rather than an episode of Doctor Who. It's like, it's like, why did you do that? It just ruined the immersion of the entire show uh, by, by having this happen. Uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at um, the, uh, 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 the, the one I've just mentioned, like it just didn't resolve well. Uh, there, there was no answer to the mystery, and Russell T. Davies went out and gave interviews gloating that there was no answer to the mystery because he didn't write one. When you when you present a mystery as a writer, you're supposed to resolve a mystery. Uh, if you're not intending on doing it, that's called lazy writing. Now, in a serial, you might do it later, which but he says he has no intention of doing so. It means he didn't write it. It means he went out there on a first draft, didn't, didn't finish the story, put it out there, and Disney golf clapped for him anyway. And then the end of this last episode, of course, uh, the last five minutes just went on this race-baiting anti-white tirade, uh, and uh, every end of the episode is just a slap in the face to Doctor Who fans. And so every subsequent week, people tune out. Now, why did people actually tune in for the 73 Yards episode? It actually was not due to uh, the fact that the Doctor wasn't in it, <laughs> that uh, they, they, people don't uh, really know that much in advance uh, when they look at things. Uh, there was a major uh, football game on during this time, and of course we had the whole tournament uh, wrapping up. It wrapped up this last weekend with uh, Real Madrid getting another victory. Vamos, Real Madrid, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, But the week before, uh, had it on, and they, they actually aired Doctor Who right after that. So there was carryover bleed over on the ratings uh, from the football game, and people were not actually watching it. There were drunk people at bars, who, and Doctor Who just happened to be on still, right? Uh, and so that that actually made a false boost in the ratings uh, here for the episode, uh, and, it, and it came right back down. So if you look at it, 2.04 was uh, the boom episode, the lowest watch yet. This one went right back down, and the new episode ratings are 2.12 million. So pretty dismal. It is a little, It is a little further up then boom but the trajectory uh week over week is well well down so what i'm going to expect is uh, i'm going to actually call that this next episode the episode uh six is going to be um going to be the lowest rated episode ever here it's going to be under two million mark it's going to be a disaster because uh, a lot of people are going to be really offended by uh the anti-white commentary at the end of this and they're just gonna be like you know what this is this is a line too far uh, they're attacking me. They're they're calling me racist when they're in fact the ones who are racist. This is you know, this is pure racism. And uh, wake up, white people. I mean, these people hate you. They want you dead, uh, and that's it. And uh, they they really think they're like some saviors of humanity uh, for just like cheering on black people. It's it's really weird and creepy. Like you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but I think a lot of people are going to tune out after this because this is an insult level which is way too far. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, you know, they've really blown their wad now. Uh, Russell T. Davies uh, has shown his true colors, his true stripes on every level. Every episode has just been some just political lecture that's been unfun, thrown you out of the show, makes you just lament the fact that, like, Doctor Who is dead at this point. Uh, and it's it's sad to watch. So, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get ups and downs on these episodes a little bit uh, here and there. But the trajectory is going to be very much the same. Now, I heard somebody uh, actually predicting earlier that it's going to get canceled after this season. They've already filmed the next season, so uh, I don't believe that's going to be the case. Uh, I think that Disney's going to be fun. You know, Disney and the BBC fund this. Uh, it's about their ESG and DEI agenda. They, they're pushing it, and they don't care. They don't care about profits. They don't care about people actually watching this. They just care about uh, about wrecking these cultural icons and making them into these sort of like uh, political uh, statements uh, in order to like really just you know wreck your your uh, entertainment time intentionally, uh, because they want everybody agitated, they want everybody at each other's throats, 
uh, so that they can, uh, you know, conquer and divide the world for their weird globalist agenda. I'm calling it like it is. I am. All right. There's the ratings. What do you think about this? Leave a comment with what you think. Hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to check out Justified Saga of the Nano Templar and its uh, subsequent uh, sequels for the full trilogy on Amazon. Really appreciate you for reading the books. We'll be back soon.